So Bebsy. Uh, just while you lock me in here, my uh, my dog just knocked over something heavy downstairs, and I've got to go look at that. No problem. I'll give you a heads up. I'm going to start breaking down the Detroit Lions at Seattle Seahawks. All right. I'll be right back. All righty. Let's get to work. 4.25 p.m. Eastern. And I do think I'm going to move on the Saints right now. I think it'll just get worse once Taysom Hill is in. I think it moves to 7.5 as an angry Saints squad. Uh, Mac Beaver says if Saints make the playoffs, Sean Payton should be coach of the year. All right, 425 p.m. Eastern, the Detroit Lions, 2-12 and 1, 0-7 and 1 on the road at Seattle Seahawks, 5 and 10, 2-5 at home. We are in Lumen Field in Seattle, Washington. Pie Guy says Panthers stink. Jimmy, lay the points with the Saints. Let's talk about this market right now in this Lions Seahawks game, a game that nobody wants to watch except for people in Detroit and Seattle. Seattle opening up in minus eight, now sevens. Sevens across the board. This total at 42 and a half has yet to move. Has yet to move. Let's go over to the cash flow here. In Oh, sorry, click that. In the cash flow, we have 2,433 tickets in. 36% of the tickets, 79% of the cash on the Seahawks, yet it's moved a point in the direction of the Lions. Hmm. 45% of tickets on the under, 60% of cash on the under. Let's go. Lions coming off a 2016 loss at Atlanta with Jared Goff on the COVID list. Tim Boyle looked much better at quarterback, 24-34, 187 yards in the touchdown and the pick. Uh, the pick was at the Falcons' one-yard line with 30 seconds left to seal the victory for the Falcons. So he had a chance to win the game for them. Goff has been activated from the COVID list, and he will play on Sunday. DeAndre Swift missed his fourth straight game with a sprained shoulder. He's listed as questionable. His replacement, Jamal Williams, ran 19 times for 77 yards. Amon Ross St. Brown had another strong game. Nine catches, 91 yards, one touchdown, and he had two carries for 19 yards. He joined Calvin Johnson. This is what Amon Ross St. Brown's done. A lot of people don't know how good he's playing right now. He joined Calvin Johnson as the only Lions players with four straight games of eight or more catches in the history of the franchise. Their defense was strong despite missing cornerback Amani Oruare. Uh, Oruare is a monster. I think he's so good, but he's got a thumb injury, and his season has ended. They combined for three sacks, four quarterback hits. Dean Marlowe recovered a huge fumble with 237 left, giving them the ball at the Falcons 37 to go for the win. I can't say the word Marlowe and not think of the wire, man. Tight end Shane Zilstra was carted off the field with a knee injury in the third quarter. And this line seems being hit really hard by injuries and COVID this year, and they've battled through it all. They lost cornerback Jeff Okuda right at the beginning of the year. They lost pro bowler and spectacular center Frank Ragnow. They lose linebacker Trey Flowers, tight end TJ Hawkinson, cornerback Amani Oruare. All the season injury and the injuries, that's just to name a few. Linebackers Julian Okwara and Josh Woods were inactive last week, questionable this week, and their COVID list is getting lighter. They have receivers Quentin Cephas, Trinity Benson, and Josh Reynolds on it, but you know I'm going to double check and see if they add anybody today. You know what? I'll, I'll just set this. I don't. God, I, I'm taking it's this. This COVID stuff is just taking so long for us. They did. They added Brock Wright, a tight end, a little used tight end. That's all. Oh no! Yesterday they put Josh Reynolds on it. Did I mention Josh Reynolds? I must have. Yes, I did. Okay. All right, let's move on. Seahawks coming off a disappointing 25-24 loss at home to the Bears on Sunday. Couldn't hold on to a 17-7 halftime lead. Eliminated the Seahawks from the NFC playoff picture. They were already assured of a losing season. And Pete Carroll hits double-digit losses for the first time in his tenure with the Seahawks. Seattle played his third home game with snow since Lumen Field opened in 2002. Just three games in snow. Russell Wilson, 16-27 and 27 for 181 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Gerald Everett caught four passes for 68 yards and a touchdown. DK Metcalf caught two passes for 41 yards and a touchdown. Tyler Lockett returned from the COVID list but didn't look very good. Three catches for 30 yards. Rashad Penny was a monster. Sharpie jumped on the show early and said that you have to bet these running backs – that are going up against the Bears. And Penny, 17 carries, 135 yards and a touchdown. He averaged 7.9 yards per carry. Carlos Dunlap, Rasheem Green, each had two sacks. Linebacker Bobby Wagner set a franchise record with his 168 tackle of the season. What a beast he is. The Seattle COVID list includes offensive tackle Brandon Shell, defensive tackle Brian Moan, cornerback DJ Reed, cornerback Blaswan Austin, and linebacker LJ Collier. Adrian Peterson and John Radigan were inactive last week and are listed as questionable this week. I'm going to see if anybody's been added to this list, but let's hear what Bebsy has to say. Bebsy, Seahawks opened up at eight. They're now at seven. Jared Goff is in. Take it away. I honestly think it's Detroit or no play here. The Seahawks, uh, let's see how they respond to being officially eliminated. 
but I think they probably felt their season was done anyways. Uh, and they lost to uh, the lowly Bears and Nick Foles. Um, and I just think this is too many points to give Seattle the way Detroit has been fighting and the way Seattle has been Seattle. Um, I, I think they're – I don't know if the organization is done with Pete Carroll. They should be. Uh, I think the players seem to be done with Pete Carroll. Um and look, they – I said this at the start of the year that Seattle was going to drop off, but I also said you can't count them out with Russell Wilson. Well, Russell has been um, fine. You know, he was injured this year, but he's not been the same Russ. And DK Metcalf, maybe the most overrated receiver in the league. Uh, he's a big, huge dude that runs fast, but his routes aren't great. Uh, and he drops a lot of passes, and he's really, you know, he's good for a couple of big plays here and there, but um, he's quieted down a ton, and I, I just think this Detroit Lions team is fighting and fighting hard, and I think the Seattle team that is not used to losing uh, is is super deflated. I agree. I agree with that breakdown. I'm surprised to see Sharps – on Seattle at this point, 39% of the ticket, 79% of cash. It just doesn't make sense to me. I, how do the Lions not keep this within seven? I mean, I just think they do that. I think they do that. Um, yeah. I, I mean, in, unless Jared Goff uh, starts having flashbacks of being dominated by the Seahawks, uh, except he wasn't. They always beat the Seahawks. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I just feel like the Lions um, have the advantage here with all the, uh, with all these points. I agree. I can get you the Detroit Lions right now, plus seven, minus one hundred nine at Pinnacle. It's moved to six and a half at Circa. It's minus one ten everywhere else, but you can get minus one hundred nine at Pinnacle. I think I join you in this. It's going to be a public play. We know that. That's what scares me. That's, yeah, that's, I mean, what scares me is just. Uh, as a Niners fan, Seattle does all kinds of things to fuck with my head. And uh, why wouldn't they here? Um, but I just, yeah, look, one team, you know, to oversimplify it is one team is playing hard for their coach. And that team is not the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, I mean, trusty saying, would you fire Dan Campbell up this year? I would give him a raise. That's what I would do. He's been... Everything you could ask for for a team that's losing and losing and losing and losing and losing. He goes out there and he shows emotion and he cares so much that he's almost crying at the end of games. And and they've been good. There's my guy Guillermo Zertucci in the house. Uh, went over to G's house after the big day at Santa Anita. And it was just God, so memorable and so wonderful. And he cooked up a storm for us. And God, it was fun. I wish that Cowboys Washington game didn't. Make me angrier and angrier as it went on. Not that I was on Washington, but I was foolishly on the under. Let's not even go into it. But G in the house. Uh, man, what a great, great guy. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm worried about this being too public of a play, but, you know, the public's going to win sometimes. You know the public's going to be all over the Lions. Okay, I'm going to give you the Lions plus 7 and minus 109. That's available at – not at Circuit FanDuel. No, or no, Pinnacle. Excuse me, Pinnacle. Uh, Circa had it at six and a half. I'd like to go with you here. Uh, Terry Walker says, fire Dan. Look, I, I, what do you think about what he's done this year, Dan Campbell, Pepsi? Look, I, I think he took on a team with very little talent, uh, lost some of the better talent that he had to injury, and still managed to have a lot of games where his team was competitive when they were – greatly outmatched i think you know whether he has the football mind to uh, actually win when he has a good team uh remains to be seen but he's proven already that he's a great motivator and look that team likes him so if i'm a lions fan i don't want him going anywhere 
Uh, not, not now, anyways. Like, give him a chance. Nobody's winning with that roster. I don't give Bill Belichick that roster. He's not winning with it. Um, they're fighting for Dan Campbell. So, man, a lot of a lot of teams in the NFL don't have a coach that they fight for, and this team is. So, I wouldn't I wouldn't consider firing him at all. Birdie, this was the first bet he made all week. Did you get the eight, Birdie? 